Um, hello, all. Uh, I will begin by introducing myself. So I completed my BTEC and MTEC in mathematics and computing from IIT Delhi. And last three, four years, I have been working as a data scientist in a firm in uh, Bangalore, India. So now coming to the topic, today I want to actually give an overview without going into the details of the mathematics that how image classification actually changed the way we see AI uh, in current scenario. So it's, uh, the topic, as you can see, it is image classification using deep learning, specifically focused on capsule networks. <clears throat> OK, so computer vision is not a new field. It's quite an old field. And we have been doing this work since, like, uh, since the early computer field. Uh, image classification, object localization, object detection, image segmentation, face recognition, face verification, neural style transfer. These are some of the applications mostly found in computer vision and have been doing with the traditional methods, which mostly involves signal processing and all that. So what's new in this? As I think most of you may be aware about this thing, the neural network, neurons, which is the birds, birds, that has actually transformed the computer vision as we see it. So these are some of the applications in computer vision using deep learning. Now, what's deep learning is? We'll talk about that. So coming to the most basic application of this, image classification. Uh, image, as you know, it's a simple image, and classification, as the term says it all, it's just assigning each pixels of the image to a particular class. You can have binary class, many classes, and like that. Uh, so coming from the machine learning background, we generally have supervised methods and unsupervised methods. There are various kinds of methods which we can use for the image classification, which I have written there. Then come the deep learning. Deep learning is basically a subset of the machine learning uh, algorithms which mostly involve neural networks. And in simple term, we say the neural network which are deep enough, more number of layers, they are deep neural network. And that's deep learning. The one point which we are very concerned about is that in deep learning, we require huge amount of data for better accuracy, for better results. That's the most important thing. And why that is, uh, when we, sorry. Yeah, so all these things starts with ImageNet data. Uh, as I <laughs> wrote there, it's actually the data which changed everything. So how it started? Uh, Professor Lee, it started working on these algorithms for simple image classification, like how to do this with neural network and everything. And the buzz was going on, and everyone was working on this all around the world. So mostly people were working on the algorithms and trying to improve their accuracy and everything. The point was uh, that her idea was that no matter how good algorithms you build, an algorithm can be as good as the data it works on. If you don't know about the data, it, will, it can never go, be as good as the uh, human are. So his idea, her idea was that, like we have a, a word net, a uh, uh, database for the words connected with the terms and terminology and thesaurus kind of things. So she wanted to build that kind of data for image. And it was a huge challenge. I think it's millions and millions of images which has to be tagged. So they uh, initially thought to hire some PhD people, some people to do that. It was not possible. Finally, they got some people through volunteer work. And they assembled a huge amount of data, image data, which was initially thought is a very trivial thing. But this data is actually the thing which we are working talking about AI. So they first published this in 2009. And as you might also know every time that this evolved in a challenge, ImageNet Annual Challenge. So ImageNet Annual Challenge was going on in 2010. The first competition came. They, everyone published the accuracy of image classification and all that. It was going on fine. In 2012, something different happened. Uh, Geoffrey Hinton, as you know, as a distinguished scientist, and he was working on neural network since 1980s, 40s. And uh, he was not getting the right kind of algorithm for implementing them. And he only then invented back propagation algorithm, which actually said that uh, now neural network can be used. Again, the challenge was 
there was not enough computation and not enough data. In 2012, Geoffrey Hinton and their colleagues, they published a, a network called AlexNet, which actually changed the accuracy of image classification by huge, huge margin. And that we can clearly say is the advent of the compute, uh, CNN, convolutional neural network, which is a special kind of neural network apart from the regular neural network. Why it is special, we will discuss later on this. So I have put this slide because it, can, it shows that how the accuracy of image classification had changed over the time since the ad, uh, advent of this image net challenge. Till 2016, it says it has beaten the human accuracy. And the last year, 2017, result is still out there. And it has actually again gained the 25% more accuracy on, over that. So it's going beyond human intelligence. Uh, this is the, you can see like it started from 2012. Uh, in the 1990s, actually, LeNet was the first network which invented by the uh, Likun sir. And after that, the ImageNet Challenge 2012, AlexNet came, ZFNet, GoogleNet, Inception module. I'm not going to details of everyone, but each model which is written there, it has improved the accuracy by huge margin. Till that, now, like 2017, uh, this challenge has got over. Now they have to bring about some different thing, 3D and virtual reality kind of challenge have done. Because I think they also think that they, no matter, we cannot improve much in there. Now coming back to this. After giving this background, now we come to the neural network. Like why neural network is important and how we come to here. I will just briefly explain what the neural network is, which is required if you go forward for the capsule network. So neural network, as you can see, it's a simple layer kind of uh, architecture. Uh, few amount of layers you can add. In each layer, we have a certain number of neurons. Each neuron, you can say that it's just a function. You give some input, it will give some output. And that function can be non-linear, it can be linear, depending upon the neuronal activity. So what we do here is that in the neural network, we get a vector, that is the input. It transforms the vector to a series of uh, hidden layers. We call it hidden layers. We don't know what's going on there. We just know the function of the neurons. And all these neurons are connected with the previous layer neurons. But in a single layer, no neuron is connected to each other. Uh, after final layer, it gives a score for, like, let's say, whatever number of classes you have, 10, 9, 8. And according to that classes, we get the accuracy. So this is the general principle of uh, regular neural network working. Uh, then come the convolutional neural network. Why it is important and why it is required, actually. So regular neural network, when you see, the most important thing is that input is there, but we have lots of parameters to train for. If you say that in one layer, we have, like let's say, 10 neurons. Each neuron is connected to the previous 10 neurons. And so it multiplies quite quickly. And if you take the image thing, if you give the other input, it's fine. But if you take an image, in image, you can see that it can, the very small image will be 28 by 28 pixels. So if you see a normal image, HD image to these days, which amount to thousands and millions of pixels, and if millions of pixels you give as an input, the parameter will be so huge, it will take a lifetime to train for that. So that regular neural network was not, uh, not sufficient to develop the things on the image. So, what they decided, they come with the CNN convolutional neural network. I'm trying to tell the idea like why the intuition behind they come uh, for this. In the regular neural network, whatever we learn, the different layers, the first layer learn the very simple uh, features of the whatever input you give, whether image or any other thing. And it builds upon that feature. The next layer will learn the more feature combining the features from the first layer and so on. What in CNN we observed and we thought like, if we are uh, in a regular neural network, each neuron is learning different kind of features. In CNN, what they saw that if we are learning feature, a particular kind of feature in a certain area of image, it is useful to learn the same feature in the other parts of the image also. So instead of connecting a single neuron to the whole image, we will connect to a local region. So if we are connecting uh, the neurons to a local region, the number of parameters will be less. So how it defines that in convolutional neural network, we have a cubic, like a 3D volume of the neurons. As you can see in the picture, the first red color thing, it is an image. Uh, it's at the height, width, and number of channels, which are three. That blue block you can see, it is a convolutional neural layer. The neurons have been arranged in three dimensional. 
what we want is that this input uh, image goes there, and this uh, block of convolutional neural layer, which is arranged, it consists of different number of filters, which we say a kernel. You can uh, imagine that these kernels, which is a two-dimensional or three-dimensional kernels, is equivalent to the weights of the normal neural network. So each kernel, the aim of each kernel, each filter, is to find a particular feature in a certain region of the image, and then that same kernel be, will slide through the whole image, and it will find the same features in different parts of the image. So uh, you can visualize like this, that if the image is, let's say, 200 by 200 pixels, and the channel number of channel is RGB, three channels is there, the uh, filter will be also, let's say, 3 by 3. The filter consists of 3 by 3 grid. So it will multiply for the first corner of the image, then slide with one, uh, one pixel or two pixel with different parameters. So this same kernel will cover the whole image and develop a feature. Let's say that feature can be the single edge detection or any curve detection. Now we have like n number of filters. Every filter will attain, uh, learn different kind of features. And then finally, whatever output they will give, the output will again will be of a 3D volume only. Uh, which will consist of the depth will be the number of filters it has. So in short, if uh, not going to details, in short, in the convolutional neural network, why we use is that because the number of parameters is totally dependent upon the filters we use. And the filter size is less, so the number of parameters is less. Generally, the filter, uh, parameters used to depend on the input. If that happens in uh, image case, it will be huge because image consists of millions of pixels. So we are using convolutional neural network. And it is transforming one block of 3D volume to another 3D volume neurons. So this was a general CNN, why we use it and how we use it. Now, uh, giving a normal uh, architecture of the conv convolutional neural network that I already said to you, so when you're building an architecture, it consists of many layers. One layer will be convolutional layer. Then we can have pooling layer. Then we can have fully connected layer. So in general, uh, why we need the pooling layer? The convolutional layer is giving 3D volume output from getting the 3D volume input. Then pooling layer is already uh, required in between many convolutional layers to reduce the size of the image. Because sometimes the uh, computations can go very far. So you have to reduce the size of the image. Uh, we have other uh, functions of pooling layer also, but one part is to reduce the uh, computation part. And the other part is uh, CNN is known for translational invariance. Uh, what that is will come uh, soon. OK, so like I mentioned you, uh, the most important thing in the CNN is parameter sharing. So one filter. Let's say the filter is 3 by 3 into 3. That means uh, height and width is 3, and the number of channels is 3. And if it mul this 3, 3, 3, that means 27 parameters. If it multiplies in uh, 10 filters and 1 biases, it will get very little number of parameters compared to the huge number of parameters we can have in the regular neural network. And these parameters, these weights, are shared among all the other neurons in the same layer. So. Uh, as you can see, this depth column, this one neuron is considering this, attaching to this one part of the image. The same number of weights will be the whole image. So due to the parameter sharing, we are checking the same feature in different parts of the image, but the number of parameters are not increasing. And it's helping us also because the same feature, detection of same feature can be useful in the different parts of the image also. So this is the USP of the uh, uh, CNN, that why we use the parameter sharing. Other, every working of the CNN is the same as our regular neural network. These are some of the parameters and hyperparameters which we use in the CNN. Filter size, we can use certain number of filter size. Zero padding, if we want that the input size of the image and the output size of the image, they consist of the same number of uh, size, uh, pixels. We can use zero padding. Otherwise, it generally reduces the size of the image by the calculation itself. Uh, strides uh, signifies how many pixels you are skipping. Uh, when you are sliding the window of the filter across the image, how many pixels you are moving on, that represents strides. Now we come to the pulling layer. 
Pulling layer is actually, its function is to progressively reduce the size of the representation to reduce the amount of parameters and computation in the network. So you can see in here that here in this square, like we have four by four grid, and for every uh, eight by eight, uh, sorry, four by four grid, and for every corner, we have taken the largest one, like the red color corner out of the four pixels, we have taken just six one. So Pooling can be done by several ways. The most popular and most uh, functional is max pooling. Max pooling is very simple. You can see from the red corner, one, one, five, six, the maximum is six, we took the six. So why it is helpful and why it is a problem also? Now, I'm coming to the main topic of this uh, uh, talk, capsule network. So coming from the regular neural network, we went to the capsule network uh, uh, from CNN. So regular neural network is okay for the normal kind of inputs. CNN is okay for the images because we want to reduce the parameters. And now we are coming to the capsule network. Why we are using capsule network? Uh, this guy, Geoffrey Hinton, he the more father of everything in artificial neural network. He actually uh, invented the uh, capsule networks and uh, it quote him that pulling operation using convolutional neural network is a big mistake. And the fact that it works so well is a disaster. Now I put this image for thinking, like if a normal human person sees this image, it's just like uh, three, four images of the Statue of Liberty. And if I again show any kind of in, uh, image of the Statue of Liberty from any angle, I think that person will definitely identify that it's Statue of Liberty. But the machine will not do. Machine uh, does not have this kind of intelligence. So by this intelligence, what we mean? So max pulling is the culprit. Uh, Okay, so to understand this, we have to go to the basics, like how humans interact with the visual system. So the uh, research had, uh, since long ago, it has said that our uh, visual system in humans, they work on the hierarchy. We first identify very simple features. Depending upon that features, we identify more complex features, then more complex features, and finally we make sense of the object coming from the edges, curves, and then finally we can uh, identify it's a box, it's a ball, and like that. So due to this only, the origin of deep learning came in, especially in the image side. The concept is same. Whenever we say that it's a neural network, it is modeled on the brain. It is not exactly totally modeled on the brain, but it uses that concept, learning the simple features and building upon that. So this is the basic. Now again, here, what is the importance here is that if you see the picture of cat in both the two images, we both humans can identify, all the humans can identify it's a cat. So in one image, it is in the, the right side, it is on the left side. Still, we can identify it's a cat, right? Well, what is that? It, it means uh, translational inv invariance. Invariance, it means that if something changes, still the output is not changing. It is in the right side or left side, we are still identifying it's a cat. But when the neural network, convolutional neural network, they learn uh, that uh, this kind of images are there, whether they will be able to change the output based on this or not. We don't want that they change this output. And that's exactly CNN does, convolutional neural network. How they do this? They do this through max pooling. So uh, as you saw that in the max pooling, what it does, it goes in a certain area of the image and out of them, it takes the maximum value of there. So if you change a slight variation in the input, the output is not going to change. So uh, CNN was required to achieve translational invariance, and it is achieving this through max pulling. Now, this was the uh, advantage of CNN, but it further on became the disadvantage also. Because we not gen just want uh, invariance, we want equivariance. Now the difference within the equivariance is that the difference within the equivariance is not just that uh, because of the uh, difference in the translation we are finding that it is the same thing. It should also look for the orientation and uh, uh, tilt and everything because as a human we can identify that. See, max pulling the culprit, it is actually allowing our models to be invariant and how I will show you how it is, this uh, problem is coming. See, uh, what max pulling does? So these two images, uh, the CNN says that both are human, which certainly I don't think so. Uh, so uh, max pooling there is that in one part of the 
uh, image, if there is lips and their eyes are there, then this is we have converted that uh, taking the largest out of them, and it's a human. That's what CNN does. So generally, we don't get this type of, type of example, but whenever it comes, Max pulling the culprit, it will say that yeah, this uh, human, this is failing. So when the idea of that, uh, when we are trying to achieve artificial intelligence to a human level, we don't want this. So CNN trouble is this. So what we want is viewpoint invariance. That means if we see an object which we have seen already, if we see it from any angle, from any direction, it should be appear the same. And that's viewpoint invariance. You can see by the uh, images that if, you know, that same images are there from any point we see, it has to be the same. And we can you know, see as the same. That's why capsule network comes. Now, when capsule network comes, the main idea uh, behind capsule network is that we have computer graphics. The main idea of the computer graphics is that to convert 3D scene into 2D objects. And how they convert the 3D scene into 2D objects in all the animations and the movies which we see. The camera is seeing all of you. For example, the camera is seeing to me. And according to the camera reference frame, we all are in a certain coordinate frame and related to each other in a special relationship with each other. And that camera will convert the image into 2D image. What Geoffrey Hinton says that this uh, part, our brain does exactly opposite of that. The brain think that if uh, when we are st storing any images, thing, thing, uh, we see a 2D image, and then we think that how we are visualizing this in a 3D image. And then we store this uh, image in separate uh, this, uh, matrices, which has a separate uh, spatial relationship with each other. So we are not storing it as a whole. We are storing in a sense that by dis uh, discarding this in a hierarchical approach, and we have an idea of like which object in relation to what. Like uh, in the previous, we will have the idea like uh, uh, the eyes should be in relation with nose and uh, how the lips are in relation with other thing. So we will not get confused this. We work like this, and that's exactly capsule network we are trying to do. So M here represents uh, the matrix. So basically, we have different uh, objects, uh, and we have matrices, which are a special relationship. Based on one matrix, we can identify the different object value. And through this, we can achieve, uh, we can see like we just don't want any number of images, millions of images to identify. We just know the basics of them. We have stored them. So if it comes from any point of view, we can say that it's image. And that's how capsule network works. So uh, time is less, so I'm quickly forwarding this. Uh, inverse graphics is the main case. Uh, whenever you get an object and capsule structure, I'm saying. So it mainly is the structure is the nested set of layers. If you can imagine that a normal neural network is there, and instead of neurons, we have capsules. And capsule is nothing, it's just itself in a convolutional layer. It has eight filters, and uh, the other thing input is same. What advantage is, is, is giving is that it is giving an output, which is a vector. The output vector of the capsule network, uh, it represents the probability that what is the probability that the feature which it is supposed to detect has been detected. And the direction of the, uh, that vector will represent what is the status of that feature. So now if uh, we have detected that there's a face in the image and we are rem uh, moving the image uh, around uh, the, ima uh, the scene, the probability that we have detected a face will not change, but the direction of the vector will change, which is saying that the status of the features has been changing. This E1, U2, U3 is the uh, vector form which we are getting from the previous capsules. Like capsules are also in layers. So the pre previous capsules, we are getting some input vector. Then this W, W1, W2, etc. These are matrices which are showing that how the feature U1, uh, how these are related to each other. Especially, what are the special relationship between each other. Once we get these uh, features from the previous set of capsules to the new capsule, then we see that this U1 hat, U2 hat, these are actually the predictions of the one layer of capsule that what will be the position of the uh, next layer of capsule. So in short, if I try to visualize that, it says that the U1 hat, U2 hat, U3 hat, these are like, let's say, nose, eye, and uh, nose, eye, these are the lips, these are part of the face. And it says that what, uh, what will the position of the face, all these features, small features, how they are related to the face. And if all of them predict the position of the face at the same place, they are doing fine. So uh, this is an artificial neuron and capsule neuron different in form. Uh, I'm just quickly forwarding this. This is the image you can see that these uh, different color uh, faces are predicted by different kind of small level of features. And they're all uniting there and predicting the main feature, face. 
uh, there's a dynamic routing algorithm consist of the uh, this capsule network which determines that which lower level features go to the which higher level features and resulting in the main output then other parts are just like the normal neural network we get the loss function we define the loss function this is a dynamic routing algorithm what the dynamic routing algorithm in short says that if a lower level feature predicts the phase is there and the reality is also that the phase is there only so it will uh, this uh, this lower level feature will go to that capsule on only not into the other capsules so this is like selective going and in this way we are having less parameters and more accuracy also uh, these are the normal caps net architecture how we do i will just you know, give an exam uh, image thing we ima uh, the one image is going the first layer is a convolution neural network the second layer is the primary capsule layer the third is again capsule layer and then we have the result which is giving the output so due to the time constraint saying these are the loss functions final uh, decoder will uh, giving you this thing capsules has been shown to be the state of the art performance on this the mnist data set which is giving to 99.75% so due to the time constraint i can't explain more so i will keep it here in the short i will say the capsule network what the significance of capsule network is that it is actually achieving the art general intelligence of the human which we are trying to achieve in the normal sense of artificial intelligence so a person can see anything and without requiring huge amount of examples they can clearly say that this is the same person and we want that kind of machines then only we can say that we are in the real part of artificial intelligence thank you any questions Sorry. Do you have to train it from part GU images, like from multiple views? No, actually, that is the main important thing. In the normal neural network, which we are achieving, we require huge amount of data. In the capsule neural network, we don't require huge amount of data, and we don't need to train it from the multiple views, because uh, what we, if we are taking the small number of data also, the storage part is such that we are not storing at that the whole thing. We are storing. in matrices we are relating the relationship between the different parts of the thing for example consider a face we are not storing it as a face we are storing the different eyes nose lips etc how they are related to each other so that maths that's a matrix multiplication that itself will give you the right result if you see from any point of view how how do you get that postmatrix yeah hello so uh, actually because of the time constraint could not explain that so pose matrix is that uh, it's a simple matrix multiplication if you get a pose matrix from one small part of the uh, whole object and simple matrix multiplication give, will give you the pose matrix of the whole if you get a part of the uh, if you get a pose matrix of a small part the big part for example if you get a small pose matrix of i from that you can get the pose matrix of the uh, face because everything is from one reference point of view uh ex uh, considering example like the camera reference point of view is there from the camera view point uh, there is some pose matrix for me and there is some pose matrix for my eye some pose matrix for my friend then because of the matrix multiplication we can get any kind of pose matrix from anyone and this is that like normal one part through if we are using the capsule network we are going to take the inverse graphic we have to take the inverse pose matrix so from one smaller part the small features to the big features we can go and from the big feature also we can go to the small features in that way actually the big feature is a face and from that if we are going that how the ears nose and lips are predicting these features if they are combining through then it's a perfect thing so we don't require a huge amount of data so any question uh very interesting uh i've got more questions but i guess the first question i have is There's a number of computer vision APIs and services now, the Google, the Amazon and the Azure. Which one of them are applying this or are any of them applying this? Or I guess what are you seeing compared to those sort of computer vision APIs and and this sort of technology? Uh, currently I, what I believe that because no one has come for the open source implementation of this. The open source implementation is just on the MNIST database. I'm sure that all the big companies they are building their own in fact my own company is building uh, things on this they haven't published it and they will not publish it I think because it's generally what we see that when we improve the in the ImageNet challenge also every year we are improving the accuracy but this capsule network is a paradigm shift it's a very different paradigm shift so anyone who will excel in this in the huge amount of they will first like to do patent and then only go for it 
So I, I'm quite sure that they're doing this, but no one knows <laughs> when they publish. You can't, you can't really tell, but you guys have been watching these changes. Uh, no, I think they are uh, clever enough not to reveal it. <laughs> um, okay, thank you, Willimas. <laughs>